Hello, girls, how are you? I thought I'd record a bit of a sample essay for you, for you to start thinking about uh, a possible question that you may need to answer in your upcoming assessment. So I just crafted a very simple question that says, uh, how is a woman warrior presented in your text? Rabbit Proof Fence by Philip Noyce and Two Kinds by Amy Tan. So you need to refer to both texts. So as we um, talked in our recent lesson, the essay has a very simple structure and at the level of ideas it has an introduction um, that it, it looks a bit like an inverted um, I'm not sure what the name of the shape is, you know, I'm not a math teacher. Uh, a bit like an inverted triangle, I would call it. Perhaps it's a parallelogram or something like that. Um, this broad part means the idea that you include first needs to be quite broad. And then you narrow down the level of ideas until you actually present your thesis statement in which you directly address the question. So for this particular introduction, um, I read it in a second. I show you that later on we have three body paragraphs in this case, and then we have a conclusion, which looks exactly the opposite uh, than the introduction. Again, at the level of ideas, we start with a narrow statement and move on to a broader statement. So let's read it together and talk about it. In society, there is an increasing need for women to fight for their rightful place and to go against seemingly difficult obstacles. Now, as you can see, I start my essay with a very broad statement about society and about the place of women in society and how women um, um, are forced to um, overcome certain obstacles. Now, the, my next sentence is about my text. This notion is explored in both Rabbit Proof Fence by Philip Noyce and Two Kinds by Amy Tan. Now, because it's highlighting it, I should perhaps uh, try to see if I can ignore that. So you can see that I have underlined both texts. That's very important so that the marker knows what text you are referring to. And then I move on to my thesis statement in which I directly address the question. Now, this is a bit of a long thesis statement. It's usually a bit shorter, but I thought I'll give a bit of an, uh, an explanation and a link directly to the notion of woman warrior. So in the film, Molly is challenged to demonstrate her inner strength as she and her younger sister and cousin are removed from their Aboriginal families by an unfair legislation from the Australian government in the 1940s. Similarly, in the short story, Ying Mei feels the need to stand up for her rights as her mother has unrealistic expectations. Both texts show what makes a young woman strong and unshakable in the face of difficulties. So, in all of that, I have directly addressed the question which says, um, woman warrior, so how is that shown in your text? Uh, obviously, it's through the strength um, that allows them to uh, face those difficulties and be successful in doing so. So as you can see, we have a broad statement, then we mention our text, and then we move on to the narrower statement. That's the introduction. It needs to be laid out in that way. It is very prescriptive, so you need to follow that um, very, very um, tight structure. Now let's move on to uh, the actual paragraphs. Um, first paragraph, it says, in rabbit proof fence, Maul is presented as a strong, powerful Aboriginal teen who is part of her culture, but someone who, is also, who also faces enormous challenges. Um, so straight away I link to my first text, and uh, in my first paragraph I refer to the opening scene. In the opening scene, direct of, director Philip Noyce sets the historical context. As you can see, that's my first point, looking back at uh, the structure of Peel. Then I, I give my example. The explanatory text referring to the historical context foreshadows what she will have to go against. Remember, that is the black um, screen that we see right at the beginning of the film. 
Now I need to analyze that and link it back to the idea that I have stated in my topic sentence. The text states to remove any half caste child from the family, which shows that Molly will soon have to be separated from, from her loving family. Um, so I have again linked back to um, the idea that I am referring to the explanatory text and in this case I am saying Molly needs to face something that no one should have to face um, and that is to be separated from their family and um, particularly being that young um, it is a, an enormous challenge that is facing her. As she's out hunting, Molly's mom reminds her of how fortunate she is, as a low-angle shot depicts the spirit bird hovering over her. This emphasizes Molly's, uh, Molly will draw her strength to overcome all odds from her attachment to nature. So as you can see, uh, another piece of evidence that I present is that low-angle shot of the spirit bird, uh, and that would obviously um, link back to the fact that she would have the strength uh, to overcome her challenges through her connection with the bird and with nature. At the end of this scene, a wide shot presents to the audience the rabbit proof fence as the longest fence in the world, which highlights once more that Molly, Grace and Daisy will have an almost impossible obstacle to face to come back home. Um, the rabbit proof fence uh, is another significant image right at the start and I have decided to include that in my opening paragraph. Molly will have to show her strength and courage when she attempts to return home. Okay, so as you can see in my first paragraph, um, I refer to Molly and the opening scene and how in, um, I have decided to include some specific evidence to prove my point that Molly is a woman warrior um, and that is the link to her Aboriginal background um, and the fact that uh, that fence is shown there um, showing that she will have to overcome that obstacle of distance. Moving on to the next body paragraph um, I move on from the beginning of the film uh, on to later on in the film and I have decided to talk a bit about um, the fact that uh, they try to, I mean, they escape from uh, the, the settlement that they were entrapped in. So later in the film, Molly, Gracie and Daisy are taken to the Moore River settlement to live in appalling conditions as they are forced to follow unfamiliar customs in order to assimilate to the white Australian society. This event pushes Molly to empower herself to ensure they find their way home. Um, on, a, on a Sunday, as they are getting ready to go to church, Molly storms into the dormitory and announces to Gracie and Daisy, come on, get your things, we are going. Um, as you can see, I do give a bit of, in my point, uh, I do provide a bit of a context of what's happening in the scene. So please don't forget that. Don't go straight into your analysis um, of the dialogue or of the film technique or the camera shot or angle. Um, give a bit of a context of what's happening in that scene. So then I go straight into the analysis and I say the poignant dialogue reveals her determination to rescue the girls. As they exit the dorm dormitory, the non-diegetic sound of the didgeridoo reminds us that their culture has given them the resilience to tackle the challenge of walking 2,400 kilometers back home. I have decided to focus on that sound of the didgeridoo because, again, in my first paragraph, I talked a bit about her Aboriginal background. So here I want to talk about that as well. I believe that that's what gives her the strength um, to survive and, and to escape in the first place. As they run down the hills, the tracker is called to find them. The cross-cutting shot shows the girl's determination and skillfulness as they run and try to deceive the tracker against his imposing figure. Remember we talked about that cross-cutting uh, shot um, in which we see the tracker following closely behind them um, and it is obvious that um, noise um, juxtaposed those two images to show that um, they were very young and vulnerable and 
they may not be able to uh, overcome those obstacles, considering the tracker is much older than them, and uh, he has um, significant experience in uh, tracking children. Um, um, but the way I have used it here, I am saying they're not only escaping, but they even try to deceive the tracker. And that, uh, when they go down to the river, that's actually a case. I haven't explained that um, because I wanted to include those particular um, techniques that we talked about in class. In this scene, to conclude, Molly shows unwavering leadership qualities as she guides the girls to obey the tracker and shows her endurance as they prepare to walk such an extensive distance. Okay. Um, I want to show, focus a bit more there. Now, I am moving on to my second text here. Um, this um, assessment requires you to focus on both. So, I am comparing how um, the idea of woman warrior is shown in two kinds. So, similarly, in two kinds, the narrator Jin Mei finds her inner finds inner strength to assert her wishes against her mothers. She shows determination as she stands up against, against her mom's unattainable expectations. I am taking the perspective that Jing Mei is a woman warrior. Okay, you could take the opposite per perspective, that's okay. But you need to say, however, in two kinds, um, there is a contrast, of course. And Jing Mei is not presented as a woman warrior. But that is up to you, okay? Jing Mei's mom wants her daughter to be a child prodigy. Sorry, She dreams of her daughter performing as professionally as Shirley Temple so that she stands out from the rest. Amy Tam uses this allusion. At first, my mother thought could I could be a Chinese Shirley Temple to show Jing Mei's mom's unreasonable expectations. Jing Mei completely disapproves of this, as shown through her negative tone in I hated the test, the raised hopes and failed expectations. As you can see, I am added <clears throat> very specific textual evidence and I am linking it back to the fact that I say that her mom has these um, unreasonable expectations of um, Jing Mei. Okay? Um, Jing Mei is obviously not very happy, and that's why I use that quotation there. And then I continue. She is now determined to make her mom aware of her own needs and plans for her future. As she fails to please her mom in a public piano performance, Jing Mei realizes that it is imperative for her to assert herself. Looking at herself in the mirror, she states, um, looked in the mirror, the girl st staring back at me was angry, powerful. She and I were the same. The mirror, then I tried to analyze that, of course. The mirror is a symbolic tool used by the author to reveal Jing Mei's powerful inner woman. She now emerges with a new strength and fortitude to overcome her mom's unfair expectations. This is also shown through the use of negative and high modality in. So I'm adding as you can see, one, two, three, four pieces of evidence there to prove that, to prove my point that she's a woman warrior. And I am progressing from the fact that I say that her mom has these unreasonable ex expectations on to Jing Main doesn't like that, and then on to, well, now she's feeling powerful because she looks at the mirror, and then the last one says, I won't let her change me, I promise myself, I won't be what I'm not. So that use of the negative and high modality presents her as a powerful, self-sufficient young woman. Okay, I only have a minute to go, uh, but as you can see, please read uh, the conclusion by yourselves. I am moving again from the narrower statements um, in, the, in the essay question to a very broad statement to recap the discussion. Um, so I restate all the ideas that I have shared, and you can pause it and read it. You can pause this video and read it. Um, and then I move on to recapping it. Let's see, I, I think I have a couple of seconds. In conclusion, both Ruby Proof Fence and Two Kinds explore how young women can empower themselves to conquer seemingly impossible circumstances. Molly attempts to do the unthinkable as she gathers the strength to take her sisters back home on foot from the Moor River settlement all the way to Gigalum.
Likewise, Jing Mei is forced to go against her mother's absurd expectations in order to assert her own will. As you can see, I'm linking to both. Both texts has masterfully explored how young me women need to follow their aspirations in order to affirm themselves. I really hope this, um, in, this essay has helped you girls, and I wish you all the best for your assessment. <laughs>